Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is Shackleton the Explorer. So, in this uh, video, well, this is the first of uh, a number of videos on the Arctic. So, I want to talk a little bit about the Arctic heat emergency, which I discussed um, in an interview with Alex Smith of Radio EcoShock uh, just uh, late last week, or late this week rather. Um, it was, uh, it came out, but I'd also like to talk about the, the Arctic report card. Okay. So for the last 15 years, a whole group, a whole slew of scientists and different, uh, research laboratories, universities, government labs, etc., have put together, uh, what they call the Arctic report card. So this year's version. ARC 2000, Arctic Report Card 2000, is the 15th year that they've, they've done it. And so the report talks about changes in the Arctic sea ice, changes in the uh, snow cover on land, changes in the ocean sea surface temperature, changes in the uh, biosphere, so the permafrost and tundra and changes in wildfires, the increase in wildfires. And they even talk about the, um, the, 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 the big whale uh, in the Arctic that lives 200 years and how that population has changed, actually increased in the case of the whale due to the increase in um, the uh, phytoplankton, the, the uh, nutrients and stuff because of the warming Arctic. So let me get right into the discussion of all of these topics. So this is my website, uh, paulbeckwith.net. Please consider donating to my PayPal to support this work. This was the previous post when I talked about the impact of low sea ice on leading to the conditions of the jet stream such that we had a Godzilla-like dust storm in 2020. Um, and also I had posted a number of videos on how abrupt climate change is disrupting the global food supply. So make sure you uh, check out and subscribe to my, uh, my, my channel, paulbeckwith.net. And uh, this is my direct uh, YouTube channel. You just Google YouTube Paul Beckwith. You can find me and you can do a search and I've posted about just about every topic to do with uh, climate change. I have new, many, many videos and I'm adding to them. Um, I usually try to get posts a couple times a week with a new series of videos. Um, but sometimes there's, you know, gaps. I don't leave a gap longer than about a week. So here's, uh, you know, I talked about how the huge and intense Godzilla dust storm happened because of the jet stream uh, contortion, um, fracturing, waviness, which is a direct result of the greatly warming Arctic. And, uh, you know, this was a couple parts video and I talked about our, the disruption to the global food supply recently also. So you can go to my YouTube channel directly or you can just, you know, just subscribe to my blog subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, yeah you can all you can find me quite easily um, this is my Facebook page you can also send me a message and uh, you know f friend me on on Facebook and here I posted for example on the Arctic heat emergency the the interview on radio ecoshock so let's have a look at this link Okay, so this is Radio EcoShock, which is actually broadcast by 100 radio stations in five countries. And this is the most recent post, and it's about how the Arctic heat emergency goes global, and that's bad news. So in 2020, of course, the Arctic was hotter than ever. That changes weather and climate around the world. Um, we investigate breaking news and science with our friendly Canadian scientist, me, Paul Beckwith. Um, I, I occasionally teach uh, climate science at the University of Ottawa, also uh, oceanography and meteorology. The last course I taught was uh, last year an oceanography.
course. This year's kind of messed up with the virus. Everything's online, but hopefully I'll be teaching, you know, I'll uh, teach again soon there. Also taught at the at Carleton University first year uh, physical geography. Um, and I'm now the largest single source of climate videos on YouTube just by sheer numbers and number of topics discussed. So please make sure you follow my blog and follow my uh, YouTube channel. So uh, Alex uh, Smith does a great job on this and he's, he's starting to do some videos. So he has a video here on all of the storms in 2020, the violent weather, record smashing hurricanes and typhoons. I would say he's a must listen. And here's a second part um, where he's talking about those things. And then in our interview, you know, the, we were talking about the temperatures in the Arctic, the heat wave in the Arctic. These temperatures are astonishingly warmer than they should be. Okay. Um, according, like just uh, last week, week before, according to the Climate Reanalyzer, which is done by the University of Maine, the Arctic Circle was on average 12 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. That's about six and a half to seven degrees uh, Celsius above normal. And that's not just in one location, but it's the average of all 7.7 .7 million square miles. It's a huge area, nearly double the entire United States. And it's 12 degrees above normal. Um, it was 12 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. So the Arctic report card basically is, is, has the conclusion that global warming has profoundly transformed the Arctic in just 15 years, report warns. The 2020 Arctic report card depicts a region lurching into a new, unfamiliar state. Now, I guess one question I talked to Alex about was, why, don't, why doesn't the Arctic sea ice level reflect the record heat? Okay, uh, so he talks about um, about some of the work I did, and I put out a number of videos on it as to, uh, you know, why we don't have this blue ocean event, why we haven't had it already. I mean, we, we set a record minimum in 2007, then we set another one in 2012. But since 2012 to now, we haven't broken that record. We came second in 2020, but we haven't broken it yet. Every year the Arctic is warmer and warmer. Um, okay, so we haven't had the ice disappear yet. So the question is why? So I discussed that um, quite a bit with Alex. And if I, I, we, we, we talked about this new paper by Jennifer Francis titled, Why Has No Record Minimum Arctic Sea Ice Extent Occurred Since September 2012? And that was published November 23rd. You can click on the link to find the paper. So basically, uh, there are, um, the, 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 net, the, the gist of it is that, uh, you know, every year since 2012, it looks like the ice is set up to set a new record minimum. In the spring and early summer, it melts like crazy. And this is partially because of the lack of snow cover in the spring, okay, is a strong factor. But then come August and September, the, um, the rate of ice loss seems to stall out. We end up getting sort of a low pressure area over the Arctic at that time. And there's clouds and storms, and that kind of delays the, Ar the, the Arctic sea ice. It, it, it keeps it from setting a new record. So I explain that and then I relate in a couple videos after how people don't understand the severity of where we are right now with abrupt climate change. We're going to lose our food supply. Okay, so make sure you follow, make sure you just Google Alex Smith and Radio EcoShock and uh, listen to the podcast. Okay, um, you know, we talk all about that. Alex also talks about the, you know, some other things we talked about are the Antarctic ice dynamics. They're amplified by Northern Hemisphere sea level forcing. So, of course, as we get more and more melt of Arctic, melt of Greenland ice, that raises the sea level and the sea level forcing then amplifies the uh, dynamics um, and melting of Antarctica. Okay, so both ice sheets are are melting back. 
and there's also changes to the jet stream the and and changes to the ocean currents the amok um, looked like it was weakening by 25 to 30 percent since 1980 but a more a recent paper shows that it's kind of slowed down that that uh, weakening um, you know so so that the the well the the uh, Here's a paper in 2015, Ramsdorf was on it, exceptional 20th century slowdown in Atlantic Ocean overturning circulation. So the slowing and slowing and slowing would be bad news for the overall planet. But then a new paper came out and it says that, well, it might be more stable now than it was. And Alex was asking me about this. I said both papers, you know, could possibly be correct. Right. They seem to be in opposition. It's just that, you know, things are changing from year to year. So, you know, it could have been dropping quickly and have a couple of years of stability and, and so on. So um, also, I want to give a plug to Stuart Scott, a good friend of mine. He founded Scientist Warning. I put I, I introduced him to the group Scientist Warning um, and he be, took a, became a big part of it. And uh, he created a new YouTube platform. It's called Facing Future. And he interviewed um, Peter Wadhams recently on the Arctic Blue Ocean event. And, uh, you know, it's just an incredibly, a really good interview. So please, please watch that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just excellent. And here's a link to my videos on how the huge and intense Godzilla dust storm arose as a result of record low uh, sea ice in the spring and uh, early summer of 20, 2020 of this year. We also talked about, you know, can technology save us? Okay. Um, for a long time, I've warned climate feedbacks will stimulate nature to release even more global warming gases than we do, humans do, and then it'll take things out of our hands. So we have to desperately find measures to bring the planet's temperature back to the range where mammals like ourselves and all the living creatures around us can survive, right? The big factor that is the most harmful is the rate of change is enormous and unprecedented and, and animals and plants do not have time to adapt to these changes, so they, they die out. So Alex said um, in one of his recent shows, there was a scientist who explained how we could use mirrors on Earth to reflect sunlight back into space, more or less replacing the effect of dwindling Arctic sea ice. I talk about things, you know, um, fairly benign geoengineering type ideas. Um, I, I mentioned some of them to Alex. For example, in Iceland, they're pumping CO2 in, back underground and it's forming rock within a couple of years very, very quickly. And that stores it away for ages. So this uh, also the use of olivine rock can, can capture carbon. You know, it's a mineral, um, can be ground up to a large surface area, can capture huge amounts of carbon. That technique called enhanced weathering, it might draw down as much as one third of our current emissions. You know, something like, uh, you know, 10, 12, 15 gigatons of, of CO2. Um, also, there's a technique called iron salt aerosols, ISA, that we spray in, would spray into the upper air and these would create cool, low-level clouds to cause cooling. The iron salts would also break down methane, produce, okay, so, which is a, has, has a huge global warming potential. And then when they're washed out by rain, um, then they would go into the ocean and stimulate, uh, fight. hey, kitty cat. Ah, oh, my kitty cat. They would stimulate, come on, come on. Yeah, what? What do you want? Whoops. They'd stimulate uh, Shackleton the Explorer, yes. Um, they'd stimulate uh, phytoplankton growth because iron is a nutrient that's deficient in the ocean. The phytoplankton would, would, uh, would then, um, some of them would drop to the bottom of the sea when they die or they'd be eaten by uh, critters and, and possibly excreted out, and then they'd sink to the bottom. I also talked about, um, you know, Elon Musk is doing very fast work engineering to in the space program, SpaceX. He could put a mylar sheet as a sunshade in space, block some light, 
and cause cooling. So there's all kinds of different ideas. Thanks for listening. I'll continue.